What is up guys, it's Cal, and in this video we'll be talking about some Shadowlands news. Shadowlands Alpha is right around the corner, there has been some data mine text with it as well. I believe this is around the time we got BFA Alpha, it was in February I'm pretty sure, something like that, but you can opt into the Shadowlands Beta, I'll put a link in the description to opt in if you'd like. But what else with Shadowlands? Well, if you've been following it at all since it was announced at the last BlizzCon, you'd of course know about or at least heard of Covenants, Torghast, and the Anima system. We already know this stuff, so I'd like to go more in depth into some of the features that were explained further down the road after BlizzCon. So let's talk about arguably the biggest change in Shadowlands, the level squish. So we know that the max level is going down to 60, that's what you'll be leveling to in Shadowlands content, but we also know for the most part that you'll be able to level to 50 in a single expansion. But let's expand more on that. What does that mean exactly? So first off, new players to the game. So players that have just jumped in, don't have another max level character, well, they'll be put into this new starting zone called Exile's Reach. This is located off the coast of Stormheim and will teach players the basics of the game. Now this area will have a storyline of its own, which ends in a mini dungeon, that will teach new players about dungeons. So new players will go through Exile's Reach on their very first playthrough of WoW, and veteran players, those of us who have max level characters, can choose to do Exile's Reach, or they can do their respective races starting zones. So if I were to make a Night Elf, I could choose to do either Exile's Reach from 1 to 10 or Night Elf starting zone from 1 to 10. Demon Hunters and Death Knights will start at level 1 in Shadowlands and they'll be given the same option of Exile's Reach or their special starting zone. And then Allied Races will start at level 10, completely skipping Exile's Reach. Now for leveling 10 to 50 after Exile's Reach or wherever you decide to start, you'll be sent to your faction's capital city on where to go next. For new players, like this is your first place through through WoW, you'll be sent through Kul'Turos or Zandalar because BFA is the most recent expansion. I assume if this level process stays for the expansion after Shadowlands, then new players will be sent to Shadowlands content from 10 to 50. The reason for this is to make it seem like new players aren't left behind, so they're able to get caught up with the story before they do the current expansion stuff. Now veteran players will be approached by Chromi, who will sense that they've done battle for Azeroth, and they'll be given the option to level through any expansion, so you can pick to level through Burning Crusade, Wrath of the Lich King, Cataclysm, Mists of Pandaria, or Warlords of Draenor, Legion, or BFA content, and you're able to switch at any time if you want to change a pace. Now leveling through an expansion is supposed to bring you close to 50. Not all the way, but close. I'm not too sure what close is, but close. So then you can just visit another expansion to finish up. And then 50 to 60 for all players is of course Shadowlands. And as far as talents goes, we're a bit too far off to see what new talents are being added or what talents are changing, but we start talents at 15, like we currently do, then the next talent is at 25, then there will be 5 level increments. So 30, 35, 40, 45, and then 50. I assume they'll add a talent row at 20. Like I said, we're too far off to get specifics on this. And yeah, no talent at 55 or 60, as of right now. That would be nice if we did because that would give us a rounded off 10 talent rows. For zones, there's really not much more to say than what we already know from BlizzCon. Orbos is the capital city, then there's Bastion, Maldraxxus, Ardenweald, and Revendreth in that order. The leveling process is going back to being linear, and then the Maw is a max level zone. Dungeons and Raids, we have the Necrotic Wake, Plaguefall, Mist of Turnoscythe, and Halls of Atonement as leveling dungeons, and then Theater of Pain, the other side, Spires of Ascension, and Sanguine Depths, of oh yeah, and as well Torghast Tower of the Damned as max level dungeons. So four leveling and five max level. So I assume that's one leveling and one max level dungeon in each zone. Then Torghast is of course in the Maw. Then there's Castle Nathria, or however you say that, in Revendreth, which has 10 bosses. Covenants, you'll choose a Covenant in Shadowlands, which is intertwined in one of the four main zones. And this is a big choice that you'll be making this expansion. We've heard this, yada yada yada. Now you'll be able to swap Covenants through the expansion, but it will be at a steep price. No specifics on what that price is, but some steep price. They have also said that they might might ease up on the price over time. So now let's talk about Anima. This is a new system in Shadowlands related to Covenants that is sort of like Artifact's power, but not really. Anima will be a resource you'll be able to get, which you can use on a new talent system known as Soul Binding. And this talent system is of course related to the Covenant you choose. So it's essentially pick Covenant, gather Anima, spend on Soul Binding. Now this isn't exactly like Azerites because you can't indefinitely grind it out. There will be a set amount of Anima that you can get per day. So think of it sort of like your current legendary cloak, you can only get one upgrade 
created that a week, no matter how many visions you do, that's sort of like anima. Sadly, these talent trees are not known yet. Then there's Torghast Tower of the Damned. Not much more is known about this than what we've heard at BlizzCon. It's just a tower and the mod that players will be working on in Endgame, which you can get some cool and neat rewards for. It's a scalable 1-5 to five player dungeon that, unlike Mythic Plus, is not timed. In this tower, you'll find different power-ups for your character, which only work in the tower during that time. These power-ups could have a chance to blind enemies or deal extra dot damage to enemies and whatnot. You can also pick power-ups that shows how much anima different mobs have, so you can focus them down for more anima. This seems like it's going to be the island expeditions of Shadowlands, which seemed really cool in concept, but kind of fell flat in execution. Next up is the Forge of Domination. In lore, this forge was used to craft the Helm of Domination and Frostmourne. Well, we'll be able to craft legendaries with it. Essentially how this works is we'll find items out in the world, probably mostly from Torghast, but I'm not too sure. These items will have power-ups on them, and we'll use those power-ups to make our legendaries on the Forge of Domination. So the legendaries we craft will have the power-ups we use, and then there will be multiple legendaries for each slot. They've described it as similar to the Mechagon punch card system, where the power-ups we find are the punch cards, and then the actual punch card trinket is like the legendary. Then something I'm excited for, the unpruning. Many of our old abilities that we once had are coming back. They haven't said every spell that's coming back yet, well hopefully, but we do have a good amount. So for Death Knights, there's Raise Dead, Summon Gargoyle, and Anti-Magic Zone will be baseline for all specs. Druids will be getting Urshal's Vortex and Cyclone, that will be baseline for all specs. Hunters, Killshot, Eyes of the Beast, and Hunter's Mark will be baseline for all specs. Mages, Frostbolt, Fire Blast, and Arcane Explosion will be baseline for all specs. Monks, there was actually no abilities listed specifically, but it has been confirmed that they will be getting some abilities back. Paladins, Diva Aura, Retribution Aura, Crusader Aura, and Concentration Aura are coming back, as well as Consecration and Hammer of Wrath will be baseline for all specs. Priests will be getting Mind Blast, Flash Heal, and Shadow Word Death, that will be baseline for all specs. Rogues, Poisons are returning for all specs, so that's Instant, Deadly, Crippling, and Mind Numb poison. Shiv will also be baseline for all specs. Shamans, totems are returning. So it's healing stream, searing, tremor, and cap totems. Those are for all specs as well as primal strike and frost shock will be for all specs as well. Warlocks, curses are returning for all specs. That's curse of doom, curse of tongues, curse of recklessness, and curse of weakness. Ritual of doom and demonic circle will be baseline for all specs as well. And then finally for warriors, shattering throw, Challenging Shout, and Shield Block will be back for all specs. That's really it, honestly. So, just some more information on Shadowlands. I definitely like the unpruning that's coming, and the level squish was something that I originally didn't like at all, but having that paired with the unpruning puts me a bit at ease, since that means we'll be getting a new ability every level or two. Forge of Domination also seems neat. Anyways guys, you can let me know in the comments below what features you found to be cool. If you guys enjoyed this video, then feel free to leave a like on it. You can sub to the channel for more videos like this. And I will see you guys in the next video.